Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode on Lillian's Couch. On today's episode, I have your very own BB Ninja star. He's a footballer. He's an entrepreneur. He's a Mr. Ikoi, as they call him. Shags. Shags, so the problem with introducing you right now is I can't pronounce your son name. So can you help me? Then I'll reintroduce you. Olushemo. Olushemo. Yeah, Olushemo. Olushemo. So Shags Olushemo. Yeah. Okay. Guys, let me not introduce him, okay? Hi. Hello. Today on Lillian's Couch, I have Shags Olushemo. Olushemo. You know in England they say Olusimo. <laughs> Olusimo. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to my couch, Shags. Thank you Thank for coming. You. I know this is my first time meeting you and it's weird because you agreed to come on my couch. Thank you. I really do appreciate that. I'm happy to be here. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Power of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome. Thank you for coming. But I'm just going to get right into it. Um, Big Brother, because from what I, when I did research about you, I saw that you used to play for a football club and you, mm -hmm. you played for like three or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering and I'm like, <laughs> who leaves a football club? <laughs> so I'm thinking, why did you go for Big Brother Nigeria or Big Brother Ninja? Um, so I've been playing football in England since I was like, I've been playing football my whole life. I signed to a professional club when I was 13. 13? I think when I hit like 23, mm -hmm. I had like a serious injury. Oh. And at the time, I should have had an operation on the injury. Yeah. But they kept telling me, you know, operation, you'll be out for like nine to ten months. Mm -hmm. And if you do physiotherapy, you'll be back in four months. So I did mm -hmm. physio as against having an operation. Mm -hmm. So got back to it, but it just kept worrying me and worrying me and worrying me. And I kept picking up that same injury again and again because mm -hmm. I didn't operate on it. So by the time I was hitting like 25, 26, like so my football talent is the fact that I'm both footed. So the same thing I can do on my right foot, I can do on my left foot. Mm -hmm. So my right knee was injured, but I was like doing everything on my left side. But I knew that I needed to like have a break, have an injury, um, have a, an operation, sorry, mm -hmm. um, and relax. But in October, it just got really bad. Wow. So yeah, it ha got really bad in October. Um, wasn't ready for the operation because I was kind of like depressed and sad about yeah. it. Flew to Lagos in December as I always do. And yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> well, how did you how did you go through that phase? Because you know, imagine doing something you really love and mm -hmm. then knowing that you have to take a break from it. That would have been really sad. I can't even imagine. Yeah, so people like people like troll and they joke about it and stuff, but like my mom, my sister will say that the day when I got the call and I knew that I wouldn't play football for at least a year, like I don't really cry with my family, but I was on the phone literally in my car, mm -hmm. talking to my mom on the phone, and my sister, just crying because I knew that like Omar. Don't this, choke. Yeah, Disney can't give them a game, man. Like, I have to rest up. So, yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, oh, no, no. That's sad. But, I mean, but very soon. You Are you planning to go back soon? or I don't really know, you know. I You're don't chopping know, entertainment <laughs> money. This guy, now you don't want to go back. I did not wait. Super unfit. Um, hardly training. Still Why? have to have my operation. I don't know, you know. Like, I don't even really watch football. Like, right now. I'm about to start watching it again because I'm doing some sports stuff mm -hmm. and I'm feeling better because of everything that's happened in my life. Um, but, yeah, like, I don't know, you know. I can't answer that right now. I've got an offer, though, somewhere, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see the money, where the money's at. <laughs> I mean, you know. And what God says at the end exactly. of the day because, I mean, you know, they say man, how they say man proposes, God disposes, exactly, something like exactly. that. So, yeah. Okay, so, quick question. Because I, I was hearing them calling you when I was saying they, was, they, they said they were bringing you on the show and people kept saying, Oh, you want Mr. Ikoi? And I'm like, why are they calling you Mr. Ikoi? And I'm thinking, do you think the perception of people knowing that you didn't need the money, do you think it affected you in the house? Um, I won't say I didn't need the money because everybody needs money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anybody that even has money knows that you need more money to keep having money. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. As in, you know, you'd be on a brook, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I needed to go on the show. I wanted to go on the show. Um... For me, I didn't even take it how people take it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't... Going on the show, I understand now that, like, you don't actually understand what your reality weighs on other people till you see how they react to it. Mm -hmm. So me, it's like... For me, I'm just like, in that house, you must yang. You shall I... Yeah, there's no phone, there's no TV. Like, you'll talk. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, I'm just speaking normally. Like, oh, I live in Nikoi. Like, that's that's my norm. Like, yeah. my dad's born there, my granddad is born there. Like, we've always lived there. Yeah. That's just my oh, norm. My... <laughs> Bro, no, but, energy. I don't, but that's what I'm saying. To me, I'm not thinking that is like one mad P. Like, I know, I'm not it's even normal. thinking. No, no I, as in, on no cocky, like, cocky P. Like, I'm actually being serious. Like, to me, it's just like, okay, cool. Like, that's the norm. Like, 
there's like super rich people in Ukraine. I don't even think I'm that deep. I think, yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So to me, I'm not even saying it like in that type of way. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, ca- I came outside and it was like crazy. And then it's like, even with like the whole like police thing, it's like, you know everyone that lives in your area. Like, I yeah. know most of the gates men on my street. Like, I know like everybody in the local Especially corner shop. Especially when you're shop. friendly. Yeah, I know everyone in the local corner shop. Like, I'd go back to London. I'll come back. Ah, has everybody missed me? I'm back for a bit. Like, it's just normal. Yeah. So when I'm speaking on that, oh, like, I know all Ukrainian police. Like, I, I don't, I mean everybody around me personally. Yeah. But like, everyone's just blowing it out of proportion and going, and it's, it's cool. Cool. You know, one thing I've realized about human beings, they will take they will take out what they want to understand from any situation. Facts. And you can't really control it, Facts. right? As much as I, I, I see perception is a thing, but regardless, mm-hmm. you you know, whatever you say doesn't define who we are or who yeah, I am. Facts. So people will be people regardless. Mm-hmm. It's not what you do from it that yeah, really facts. matters. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Everybody wants to, you know, be affiliated with successful people. So when Facts. you're successful, nobody will remember, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. one Mr. Joe, just like, ah, I want to know him, I want to meet him. So Facts. I'm going to tell you a shocking thing, because I'm sure you, you, I mean, you don't know. I went for Big Brother Africa in 2014. Really? I know. I was just waiting for you to talk, and you're like, oh, you wow. know, when you're in the house, wow, you know, you wow, just talk, wow. talk, talk, talk. I was, after my set, they haven't had any Big Brother Africa again. Mm-hmm. So they now started like Big Brother Ninja again, right? Mm-hmm. After a while. So I get it. But then obviously we didn't have social media. We didn't have all these blogs. We only mm-hmm. had Linda, KG, and Bella. Okay, fair. We didn't have like online presence, the mm-hmm. way you have Insta blog, all these bloggers. Yeah. We didn't have it then. Mm-hmm. It was really, you know, just there, you know. And our set was just funny. So a lot of people didn't really watch because the house got burnt. Wow. And then before they could now, you know, put us mm-hmm. in another house, and it was just a lot, right? Fair, fair. So I kind of understand certain things you say, your unspoken words, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Unspoken mm-hmm. words in the sense that when you're in there, it's like a different world. And mm-hmm. I keep telling people, it's not, you at some point, you actually forget that there are cameras, right? Mm-hmm. You Facts. Because really, you forget. You, mm-hmm. I mean, you're a human being. Even if you came with your script, you, you'll lose God at yeah, some point. Yeah, you have to. You so, for sure. I mean, so, you know, when you say things out of context, mm-hmm. you're not obviously processing that, you know, this is how people perceive you. You're not thinking, mm-hmm. oh, like, before I say this, how would they think about you? Just say it. Mm-hmm. And Facts. then you come out, you see people have taken it out of context mm-hmm. and you're like, how does that correct me? Really, like, like I can't, can't be bothered, right? You can every single person and like, um, correct it. So. And then you just move on from it. So mm-hmm. I completely get it. But I want to ask a very serious question that affected me then. I want to know if it, I mean, if it affects you guys as well. How is your mental health? Do you, when you came out, how was it? Like, were you depressed? Were you having anxiety? How did you feel? Because this is this are these are conversations people really don't like to have. Mm-hmm. And I now I'm in a space where I can talk about like, oh, me being depressed in the past or mm-hmm. me almost dying from depression or whatever, whatever, whatever. Because now I'm I'm strong. My mental mm-hmm. health, I'm a lot. If I know you're gonna like mess up mess mm-hmm. up my brain, I move. Mm-hmm. Like I protect my mental mm-hmm. health. If I know being on Instagram for one week is gonna stress me, or there's so much I just go off. Mm-hmm. So like for you, how do you manage it? Because it's a lot. Um, I was definitely broken when I came out. The thing about me is, I'm not gonna lie. I can say it. I was definitely broken. Mm-hmm. I didn't think this was what I was coming out to, to be honest. Um, and yeah, it was hard. Like it was really hard. No. And I feel like a lot of people like it's easy for them to. To be honest, when I came out, I felt like I didn't have a voice. That's the truth. Um, some of the stuff that is hanging around me. And that I'm accused of. Yeah. 97% yeah. of women that speak on it are actually telling the truth. And only 3% are lying. So I didn't have a voice. There's yeah. nothing I could really say that yeah. anyone would be like, oh, yeah, you know what, bro? We believe you. They will find cracks in any single thing that I say. So mm-hmm. that was tough to feel like I didn't have a voice. Um, and yeah, like, obviously, have an amazing fan base. Um, that's super good. What's what's it called? What's your Shags FC. Shags FC. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so cute. You get me? So I feel like they really like kept me going. My family, mm-hmm. super supportive. And also me, like, in fact, scrap that. God, first and foremost, to be honest. I feel like I'm quite spiritual. I feel like my journey is meant to be bumpy because where I'm going to mm-hmm. is it's never straightforward for me, mm-hmm. you know. Even my football career was never straightforward. Mm-hmm. So um, I feel like it's just a part of my life and I feel like at the end of the tunnel, there's light and mm-hmm. I feel like people see the greatness at the mm-hmm. right time. Yeah, and I love I love um, your mindset to it because at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you from a place of someone they've bashed online, someone that people have written off, someone mm-hmm. that people, you know, 
I had to work, work, work extra hard, you mm -hmm. know, to be where I am now. Oh, filmmaker. People mm -hmm. see me doing things now. Mm -hmm. It's never been easy. Uh -huh. I've always had this perception hanging around me. Like, you know how people just have this perception about you? Oh, this girl is just... Oh, this mm -hmm. girl is yeah, just... Yeah, for sure. Oh, this girl, there's just one... They just, uh -huh. they just always just assume, right? Mm -hmm. And I had to work hard to get to a point to say, you know what? I'm not going to keep proving myself to anybody. I'm mm -hmm. going to let God take charge. Mm -hmm. and I like the fact that you said scratch that God first. Because once you put God first, that's it. Yeah, fact. Every other thing will be added. Mm -hmm. The beginning of this year, I only asked God for two things. Mm -hmm. Normally, whenever I'm entering you, I'm like, oh God, please, um, I want money. I want to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do this. I'm always asking him so much problem. Even me, and they say, God, retire. <laughs> Wait, by the time I ask him, this one ask him, waiting. Now, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So this year, I sat down here. Yeah? I was praying. I said, God, I want, I'm just going to ask you for two things. And if you can do it for me, yeah, uh -huh. I would serve you with my life. Mm -hmm. Like, so when I'm going to church on Wednesday, sometimes the people are just like, it's not my relationship, not me and God. Just uh -huh. leave me, you know, I know why. And then really, really, now this is where in October, I don't know when we'll release this, but, you know, hopefully soon. And I can tell you that I have seen him change. So I told mm -hmm. him, I said, my perception and put people in gatherings that will speak for me. I'm not joking. Mm -hmm. My producer here, right? Mm -hmm. She's a producer of this my show. She can attest to the miracles that's happened. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, it's not even, I'm not even joking. Some jobs I did this year, the lady that called my name in the room, I don't know her. Wow. Never done anything for her. Wow. She, even after she's done that thing, I'll reach out. I'm like, oh, can I take you for lunch? Can I take mm -hmm. you for dinner? She's always like, busy. You can tell she's mm -hmm. really not just interested. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, I, she, she's just like, I don't want anything from you. I'm just like, <laughs> I feel like you like you are good at your job. And, mm -hmm. you know, people, you need to be sane, right? Mm -hmm. So I get, I completely, it resonates with me. So mm -hmm. and I get where you are. But I'm just happy that, you know, you're moving on and you're still doing the work and you're, mm -hmm. you know, thriving. I heard you on Tola Odunsi series. Yeah, we're oh about to drop Blossom. When is it dropping? Um, the 10th of November. A day to my birthday. Wow. I'm on the 13th, so Scorpio season. <laughs> it, no, I mean, you're got, Scorpio. I got, yeah, I got Scorpio type. Like Scorpio season. Check your Scorpio. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Scorpio season. We should talk after this interview. Scorpio season for real. Just call me. You have my number? <laughs> Scorpio season. We should we should catch up. Um, okay, quick one, so I don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your perception about family? Uh -huh. marriage like because why I'm asking you this is from a man's perspective I want to know what you think because sometimes you know I know I was at a point one time when I was just like oh I fuck love men are scum I mean now I'm back to like oh, I need a man I don't mind a man God sent me my man uh -huh. you know that would love me so what do you think of marriage because see a lot of marriages these people just get married you know before <laughs> you know two months I know how many I should be I've I was close to asking for my refund because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't have money. Maybe I should just ask this person to give me that should be money back mm -hmm. to do one or two things because it was expensive. I really, like, you know what, yeah? I really love that you asked me that question. <laughs> um, I love marriage. I love love. Aww. I think your experiences in life and what you've been through and what you've seen growing up is, like, will be a testament to who you become. Mm -hmm. And even, like, going on the show, a lot of people, like, oh, this guy doesn't love this babe. He's capping. And I'm not saying... I'm the finest person in the world, but I just feel like because of how I look, the tats, the earrings, everything, like, it's, like, scripted that I must be a playboy. But mm. here's the thing, like, my parents had me at 25. They were together in uni. They got married at 25. They're still, they're in their 50s. They're still together now. They're best friends. So that's what I know. I, like, and I have love for a lot of my friends that have grown up in different situations, but mm. I haven't grown up in that situation. So what I know is you find your person, you connect with your person, you build a family, and you try and be successful. Mm -hmm. So that's what I grew up on. So even now that I've come out, some people are like, why is this guy going to just be knocking babes, having like having fun? It's like, nah, that's not really it. Like for me, I want to meet the right woman. Um, in fact, I think I've met the right woman. But again, like, yeah, and just deal with that and like actually like get married and build my life. So for me as a man, it's three things. God, financial stability, and having the right woman. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, no one leave me for trenches. <laughs> I can't even continue like this. God, please, I don't want to be the only one single. Please. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling this way. 
<laughs> but anyways, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I actually love the idea of marriage. Mm-hmm. I love, I love family. And then I, my dad, my dad is late now. He died two years sorry, ago. Sorry, darling. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, so sorry. I mean, and I watch my mom be by my dad's side to mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. So I kind of understand that there's actually true love. Mm-hmm. No matter how much breakfast anybody served me, or I serve them, I will still love. Mm-hmm. If Ali, another I'm guy happy come you're out, that you serve as well. I mean, yeah, you know, because as humans, we're always forming, oh, mm-hmm. he's always the man, he's always, I mean, there's some relationships that I'm sure I was wrong. Mm-hmm. There are some other relationships that the guy was wrong. So it's always both ways. Mm-hmm. So I'm not one person, I'm not one-sided. Mm-hmm. I used to be that one-sided person that I always look for, say, mm-hmm. he's the guy, he's the guy. But now, you know, Scorpio now, mm-hmm. and then my manipulative side comes out sometimes. And I'm just like, but I mean, I like that now I'm just, as you grow older, you just, you really yeah, just understand life you know, better. Perfect. So quick one, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you, do you intend to be, you know, start living in Nigeria or like London or just shuffle you know, no. back and forth? I'm, I'm on that best of both worlds. Okay. I, feel like, I feel like that's so, so, super important. I love being in Lagos. Um, this is home. This is my real life. Um, but like London's a big part of me as well. Um, I need to be there as well. I don't feel like my brand is just Nigeria based. I'm trying to take my brand to the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to work with brands in Nigeria. I'm trying to work with brands in London as well. Mm-hmm. In Europe, to be honest. So yeah, I think best of both worlds, like staying in both countries is important. Do you want to make some euros and some pounds? I'm um, on that one day important. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so we're going to go into I can't show our body segment. This segment, Chef, mm-hmm. go speak Pigeon English. You know, go speak English. Oh, all of the UK. <laughs> now we are going to Niger, the route. It's like Koyi. I'm going to Koyi. Coming from London. You need to tell me. You need to tell me your most embarrassing moment. This Akanchawa segment is you telling us. You know, the mm-hmm. most embarrassing moment that you cannot even say it because ah, like my own. I've said it online. Everybody knows. I mean, because mm-hmm. that's the most embarrassing moment of my life. A hey, body mm-hmm. pooping on the road. I mean, that's wow. like. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not what you think. Don't look at me like that. Mm-hmm. Still, prim and proper. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I just make I just uh-huh. so you now talk your own, and the story must be sweet. I mean, we don't do want I, to hear. Do I have to speak in pigeon? Yes, you, you must speak. No, no, you must speak. <laughs> I don't understand. Wait till you want to. I want to. I don't feel understand. Um, ah, come on. Let me think. No, let me think. Make I think. Oh yeah, um, think. <laughs> one day where I go club. Mm-hmm. Um, I just did drunk, so that's what I did outside. I just did throw up on myself. <laughs> you throw up on yourself? Yeah, and also they have they call ambulance, so I need to take this guy to hospital because be like, say this guy won't die. Ah, you had, like you did throw up for your body, all your body. Yeah. People but, no girls, men, people, people did it. That time, sure, I did like seventeen, eighteen, so. Ah, uh, but you, sh- but you, you did embarrass any girl where you did like there around this scenario. This scenario. Now the girl they take care of me now. <laughs> ah! So you go just to say ah. But you vomit for body. No, 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 no. Just for myself. <laughs> like you know, whoa, 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 that kind of vomit, like super disgusting. Oh my gosh. So nasty. I can imagine it. And you find that like the way you find that you find that that time. Like, I don't know. I will show you pictures now. Ah! <laughs> this is what she said. Okay. You know, so you talk, guy, now check. Well, give her half. Mm-hmm. We pass off. Mm-hmm. But yeah, anyways, guys, I'll be right back. I just want to enter the food segment. You know, that's my favorite segment because I'm a foodie. Yeah, proud foodie. Producer, stop looking at me. Thank you. Um, should I do it? Do you want to do it? Do it do it's it. ladies first. Though. No, no, no. Nah. I've, I've never heard of my man first. <laughs> my producer says I don't know how to open that. Always say it's not classy. Uh-uh. Uh, you just embarrassed me. Because when I open this, this food is from Sea Lagos. That's actually Sea Lagos is one of my favorite restaurants right there. The food is amazing. Why did I put chili? Oh, okay. What did you order for? You ordered for chips, though. Take no, this is your own. That's yours. No, yeah, this is mine. You ordered for chips. Yeah. Can I get? No, let's get proper cutleries, please. Guys, can we get proper cutleries? Is that proper? Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Or should we use. Okay. Oh, let me just try this. Let me try this. Hmm. No. No one's going to be Are you a foodie? So you like food? Yeah, but I want to stop. Let me taste it. Do you like chili? Do you like chili? 
Hmm, so I call you the lip finger. So first class in now. Hmm? I'm from Nige. You're from Nige? <laughs> Me in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we have to talk so I can eat this food well. My producer is already eyeing me. Please, I have to go. I want to be classy. <laughs> hey guys, I'm back from too sweet talk. <laughs> I'm supposed to be bougie. I'm a British boy. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, Shex, I'm just going to go right into it. I want to ask you one question, right? Do you think in the house there was a part of you that Nigerians never got to see? Um, For sure. To be honest, I feel like they saw it. I feel like because of the bias, they just didn't want to see it. Mm -hmm. I feel like Nigerians didn't see how honest and how real I was. Okay. Nobody that I considered a friend did I ever put up, like ever. For never, eviction, right? For eviction, never. Like um, nobody that I was close to, nobody did I ever like. I wasn't like backstabbing and bitching about people. Mm -hmm. If I yell you something to your face, I yell you. I can yell you behind you. If I yell you behind you, I can yell you to your face. That's how I was. Um, I feel like I really held people down. I feel like I was real. I feel like I'm one of the people that wasn't even playing the game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, I kind of felt like people connected with me based on that. Um, I was actually myself. Like, I just started, when I came out, I started feeling like I would have done better on the show if I went on the show and I said, oh my God, I'm so poor. You know, when I was in England, it was so hard for me. Like, I was back in shifts in a factory. Mm -hmm. Like, things where I was suffering, man. I mm. feel like they would have connected me with me. Yeah. Um, and just like people telling those So things. So, yeah, like I just feel like they didn't see that side of me that I was actually genuine, real, honest, loyal, and actually like a good person. I feel like they just, um, and also like just a real relationship where like people disagree with their partners. Which is normal. Wrong, um, we're young as well and we're learning every day and we're growing. And I feel like people didn't want to see that. People just wanted to like, Throw me under the bus yeah, because he's a bad it made guy. Sense. It was easy. You mm -hmm. know, people always like it to when it's mm -hmm. easy. You know, it, when you're the easy target, mm -hmm. it's easier to say Shaq is crazy. Shaq mm -hmm. is a fucking nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. easy. He's it's a easy. fine boy. It's easy. He has tattoos. So and I it's promise easy. you, when I spend time with people, they're like, "This is not you." This is like, not you. It's not making sense. Yeah. Like, I keep getting that every single day I go out, and I just feel like, okay, that's not that bad because I guess over the next few years, as people get to know me, get closer to me, I can change the narrative. My darling. Let anyone think whatever they want to think. <laughs> it's not your job to change anybody's. Fair, like, fair, what's you, you can, what can you do? Mm -hmm. So, the best you can do is become a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to think you're an asshole, so keep thinking that. <laughs> they'll be all right. Some of these people can't mm -hmm. even pay for data. So, who cares? <laughs> Bro, they'll be fine. Anyways, thank you so, so much for coming thank on my couch. Um, I really you, do appreciate. I pray you get everything you deserve. Amen, I pray amen, you get amen, your healing. Amen. You know, I pray your mental health is amazing. Amen. And yeah, I just wish you the best. Thank and I'm rooting so for you. Thank you. Thank Scorpio, you, thank you. you know, Scorpio. Scorpio vibes. <laughs> thank you for having me. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching another great episode on Lillian Scouts. Please do not forget to like share subscribe drop a comment and as you all know we are open to constructive criticism only i love you all <laughs>